Welcome to the Hermitage Worship Service. This is the service for Sunday, November 1st, 2020. This is the Feast of All Saints. It is the day where by tradition here at the Hermitage, we conduct our memorial service. We remember all the residents of our community who have entered into eternal life during the past year. I'm Reverend Kathy Howell. I'm the chaplain of the Hermitage. Let us still our minds and open our hearts as we prepare to worship, as we listen to the prelude for all the saints performed by Betty Cooley, our pianist. Today we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. This is the day where traditionally the, our community, the Hermitage, has recognized and paid tribute to the memory of all those who have died during the past 12 months. It's an appropriate day because this is a day when we celebrate all the saints in heaven. And by faith we believe that those who have gone before us, who have died in faith, are now counted among that number. Let us pray. The countless saints of history who have blazed a trail of courage through time. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We give thanks for the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of the fearless ones. We remember, O oh Lord. We give thanks for the supreme love of Jesus, the blessing of his spirit, the reminder of his words, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection shone forth in the lives of his disciples, young and old, dead and living, strange and familiar, brilliant and ordinary, some known to us and many known only to God. We remember, O oh Lord. We remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown the Lord to us. 
We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us worship the Lord with joy. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Our opening hymn will be for all the saints. scripture reading today comes from the book of Revelations, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one can count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne of the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hand. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who was seated on the throne and to the Lamb. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to them, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are the ones who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God. 
and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them by day, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God our Father will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I really don't know what could be more beautiful than this image. To think of a multitude of people, more than you can count from every tribe and every language, from every nation. Think of that. That is the way heaven is. We may look and find differences here on earth, but those differences aren't going to matter in heaven. It's a pity we let them matter here on earth. And I think that's why Jesus called us to love one another, to do good for one another, to even pray for those who persecute you. Because Jesus had come from heaven and he knew that all those outward things like race and color and creed and language, those aren't going to matter. What matters is the heart, the heart that God sees. And it is God who judges that heart. And I hope and pray that all those who have died have, have gone on to glory I know that I am blessed to have many people who touched my life, who guided me to a faith that I pray if I live and, and finish the race faithfully and run the race in faith and stay the course, that I too will be united in that throng of believers, of people from every tribe and nation before God. Today we've come to remember those of our community, to honor them, those who have walked with us for a while but are no, no longer by our side. They have gone on. We pray that they have gone on to share in that glory I'm so glad that it's God who judges because he looks into the heart and he judges the heart and his eyes see further and his wisdom is more profound than anything I can imagine. I know you each have your own memories of the names I will mention shortly. I hope you will honor that memory. You will focus on the good things you shared. Let go of anything that was unpleasant and forgive. And instead, be encouraged by the best that was in each and every one of these members of our community. And the best that was in the hearts of all those you've known who have gone on to glory. After all, they've completed the course, they've run faithfully the race, they now have the prize. What a prize, they hunger and thirst no more, the sun doesn't strike them by day, the lamb on his throne is their shepherd, and Jesus guides them to springs of the water of life. And God our Father has wiped away every single tear. What a great and wonderful future awaits us all. At this time, we will honor those of the Hermitage community who have entered into eternal life during the past year. As each name is read, let us remember all these precious souls who no longer walk by our side in this life, 
yet whose integrity, friendship, and love have touched and enriched our lives. Bertie Alston. Peggy Axel. Helen Bosserman. Alan Cockrell. Gertrude Colgrove. Betsy Crosby. Margarita Di Rivero. James Falk. Rex Ferkins. Charles Fisher. Dorothy Ford. Rachel Garby. Shirley Joffrey. Kenneth Gibson. Nancy Gilbert. Elsie Hedberg. B. Larson. Bob Long. Francis Luger. <laughs> Helen Morgan. <laughs> Ralph. Nichols.
Norm Pedersen. Dennis Rockford. Nancy Rosenberg. John Silverson. Agnes Stanton. Isabel Steiner. Al Stevis. Joseph Ullman. Cornelia Warmenhoven. Albert Yarshus. Anne Young. Now, let us join together in praying the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Our closing hymn appropriately as we celebrate the lives of those who, have, who are now stand before God's throne as all the saints in heaven. And we hope and pray that all those who have, who have gone before us here in the past, during, died during the past year, now stand among that heavenly throng. So because from the earliest days of Christianity, Christians have celebrated when people die because it's the day that they leave the sorrows and pains of this earthly world and know the fullness of their salvation and joy in heaven. In my own hometown of New Orleans, it's traditional that as you leave the cemetery, to play when the saints go marching in and it's real, it's as at jazz funerals and it's upbeat and it's powerful and people dance and strut and wave white handkerchiefs to celebrate. And then they go home and they share wonderful stories. I hope you all will share the good stories you have of those who, of those who have died during the last year. But I thought one way we'd celebrate now is by listening to probably one of the most powerful images we have in the world of music, I think. You see, Handel 
the composer who's famous for composing the Messiah, he wrote that. It's all based on scripture, and he wrote it in 24 days. The whole, the whole oratorio is what they call it. It's not quite an opera, but it's an oratorio. He wrote the whole thing in just 24 days. He barely ate. He barely swept. He slept. He felt inspired by God. And it is said that for the beautiful strains of the Hallelujah chorus, he said that he did think he for a moment glimpsed a vision of heaven, of God himself seated on the throne and all the company of angels and saints singing the Hallelujah Chorus. So immediately following our service today, the First, Dallas Choir, First Baptist Dallas Choir will sing, an orchestra will sing the Hallelujah Chorus to celebrate the lives of those who have gone on before us. And in the meantime, until we meet again in worship or meet again at God's feet, may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain forever. Amen.